Buenos dias, mi amigos. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a comment at the end. And um, we have a YouTuber here that is asking me to revisit the topic of sons of God. All right, and the, this YouTuber, uh, fear of the Lord. He says, brother, I would revisit this if I was you. All right, so let's revisit this topic. All right, so in this comment specifically, there are uh, some signs that I see. Okay, when you um, say this word Elohim, that's not in the Bible. Elohim, no results, not in the Bible. So that's telling me that you don't trust the Bible that you hold in your hands all right and so you've surely you've heard me talk about this many times in 2nd Corinthians 15 or 2nd uh, Corinthians chapter 3 verse 15 it says even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away all right so this means that if you don't have faith the veil is upon your heart nevertheless when you will when you shall have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ then the veil is taken away and now your eyes are open and you should be able to see whatever it is that you desire to see but if you don't have faith you will not be able to see all right so when you're pointing to Hebrew words, you're pointing to Greek words. Let's see, right there. Greek, right, and Hebrew. So that, that tells me you don't trust the Bible that you hold in your hands. And then there's more evidence of this. I think you're giving yourself away pretty good here. The Book of Giants. All right, that tells me you don't believe the Bible, but you believe. Um, the fables, right? What is that verse that I'm thinking of here? They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And so that's what we're getting in the world today. It's very, very obvious, clear and clear all the time. People don't trust the Bible, but they'll trust these fables, these fairy tales. It's incredible. Now, there's the Epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh, you know, I mean, on and on and on, Planet Nebru, okay, so, I, do you got the whole gauntlet of nonsense in this one comment, now, I, the Nephilim, okay, again, that's a word that's not in the Bible, alright, so I'm going to show you Uh, the simple truth of it all. Here you got pointing to uh, First Jude. First Jude. What do you think? Did you did you happen to read Second Jude? Okay, that honest mistake. No big deal. All right. I had to make sure there wasn't more to. more to that than maybe there is in one of those fables book of the giants maybe it's there all right so there's uh i guess a couple of things that i want to go over all right you know what I'll, what i'll just say here in, in in the book of jude there's no mention of all at all of angels good angels bad angels whatever no angels are having sex in the book of jude uh, you're simply imagining something that is not there. And I don't know if I can really even help you until you start believing the Bible that you hold in your hands. How can I help you? That's where it starts. It starts by having faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands. So one of the first mentions here uh, is Job 38. So let's go over that. Job 38 mentions the sons 
of God. And this has to be, without any doubt, talking about men. All right, and that the phrase sons of God, the word sons in the phrase sons of God, that should be a clue. I mean, that should be a clear, crystal clear clue that this can only be talking about men. All right, and we know that the sons of God were created on day six. All right, there's, there should be no dispute about that whatsoever. All right. Uh, verse 26, let us make man in our image. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. All right. And um, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So there should be no doubt at all that man was created on the sixth day. All right, no question about it. All right, and of course the man that God made was Adam, and chapter two, it begins to tell us more specifically of the creation of man. Now, so I get it, you know, Job's, uh, God is talking uh, to Job about where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth. Declare if thou hast understanding. But you'll notice in the context of what the Lord is saying here is that he's not just talking about the creation. He's talking about everything. The creation of the world the way the world is now and the world that is to come all right I mean this is you don't want to lose the context of what God is telling Job do you have better understanding than I do if you understand better than I do then declare it let's hear it in Isaiah verse uh, in Isaiah chapter 29 verse 16 surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay for shall the work say of him that made it he made me not or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it he had no understanding so this is uh, directly parallel I think it's the same thing that's going on here is what we're reading in Isaiah 29 verse 16 God has done it all God knows and he's the one that, that made us without him we're not alive right now and we do not have greater understanding than the one that created us all right so that that's really as simple as it gets I mean, that's what the context of this conversation is and God, obviously, he's hammering, hammering this home, this fact. All right. But make no mistake about it. The sons of God has to be men. There is no other possible alternative. Now, to make the argument this, that sons are not men, and just on its, just by itself, it's ridiculous, but think about this your argument would be well this is talking about this verse here is talking about uh, before man was made okay all right so uh, since man was made on day six you've got five mornings here in Genesis 1 leading up to day 6 alright so um, you have a very narrow window to make this argument 
But, you know, go back here and look. When the morning stars sang together. So when were the stars made? Well, we know the stars are made on day four. So now your window gets even tighter. Now you have to make the claim, well, this was only occurred on day five. Stars are made on day four. Man was made on day six. Your window is day five. Now this window that you've so uh, tightly narrowed yourself into does not apply to with everything else that we're reading. It, it doesn't. Alright, there's no way to possibly justify that sons doesn't mean men. By definition, sons are men. Alright, you understand what I'm saying here, right? You got stars made on day four, men made on day six. You've put yourself in a tight little window that cannot be justified. All right, so that goes. There goes your your whole theory. It's destroyed. Now, oops. Let's do it this way. I don't know how this will, will turn out. Here we go. Okay. In Luke chapter three, you're given a gene genealogy uh, that traces all the way back to Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was the son of God. All the men were sons of God in the days of from Adam to Noah before the flood. They were all sons of God. Every single one of them. All the sons of Adam were the sons of God. Now the children of God did not begin to separate until the promises of God were made, establishing his covenant with Abraham. That's when we get a separation of the children of God and the children of the devil, which was created out of necessity, obviously because of what was going on in the world before the flood. So let's get into Genesis 6. Now it's very interesting to me. I mean, look, first of all, every single mention of the sons of God is talking about men. All right, there's never, never a mention of sons of God being angels that's out completely out all right you need to put that to bed put that to rest because it's not supported by scripture anywhere at all in fact the scripture specifically says angels are not sons of God it specifically says it's asked the question which the obvious implication is the angels are not sons of God all right very obvious now if you actually read Genesis 6 and believe that this is from God to you if you actually believe these words all right, stop relying on experts and scholars. Stop going to the Greek and stop going to the Hebrew. If you truly believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, it should be very clear for you to see. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. What's it talking about? It's talking about men. That should be crystal clear easy peasy simple to see what it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God the sons of God then this is clearly talking about men there's no way to get around it no 
possible way to get around it. Genesis 6, Sons of God, is talking about men. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Herein lies the problem. They had several wives. They were working out of order. They were not doing things right. They were wicked. Because they were taking wives, not just one wife, but wives of all which they chose. That's what's being portrayed here in these first two verses. This is the problem. That's the problem we can identify in the first two verses of Genesis 6. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Right? So he sees, he's identifying a problem already. They were taken wives of all which they chose. All right, so he, num he gives them 120 years. Now, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God now, uh, hold on. Are you noticing here? Men, sons of God, my spirit not, shall not always strive with man. So it's already been established that son, sons of God are men. You don't lose sight of that, right? What's it talking about in verse 1? It's talking about men. And then if that's, you know, in. Verse 2, you got sons of God. If that's not enough, it should be crystal clear by verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. So if the problem is they took wives of all which they chose. So if you're going to say, Well, this isn't man, then why is God identifying the problem? with sons of God taking wives of all that they chose and then the Lord says my spirit shall not always strive with man why what's what ha what's the problem here well men began to multiply on the face of the earth daughters born under them that's not the problem that was commanded of them in the very first chapter of the book of Genesis and God blessed them talking about man and said be fruitful and multiply so what do we read in verse in uh, chapter 6 verse 1 and it came to pass when men began to multiply God told them to multiply and that's what they did and then the Lord says my spirit should not always strive with man well, what's the problem? Well, the problem was crystal clear. That they took wives of all which they chose. Therefore, the problem is these guys. And these guys are these guys. And that's why God says, My spirit shall not always strive with man. You can't get around it, man. You have to willfully be ignorant. Willfully be dumb. And there's no nice way to say it. You have to say, no, the Bible's wrong. And these fables, I re you know, these fables that, I, that are not the Bible that I read, they're true. The Bible's wrong. That's the only argument you can make. only argument you can make 
is to say the Bible is wrong. All right. So if I mean, if you really do want to have understanding, it first requires faith. There were giants in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men. Can't get around it. What's it talking about? Men, which were of old, men of renown. What's it talking about? Men. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. What's it talking about? It's talking about men. So we see a constant, clear theme here. My spirit shall not always strive with man. It even says the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repents me that I have made them. No mention of aliens or Nephilim or UFOs or, you know, angels. No mention of that at all. What is very clear is that God is displeased with man. I mean, if you're going to make this claim that giants are a different breed, not man, and that sons of God are not man, and you're going to say giants are wicked, and you're going to say sons of God are wicked, then why did it repent the Lord that he had made man? Well, man, has, uh, if you, by your measure, by your argument, man hasn't done anything at all wrong. The only evil being done is by giants and by sons of God, which you claim are not man. So then why does it repent the Lord that he made man on the earth? And it says here in verse 5, God saw the wickedness of man. Well, what wickedness? You're claiming that the only wickedness is from giants who are not men, sons of God who are not men. Of what wickedness has man done? If giants and sons of God are not men. You see what I'm saying? You're relying on fables and men that do not believe in the Bible at all to tell you what the Bible says. It's ridiculous. And here's Really, for me personally, the biggest issue I have in all this is that you're going to say sons of God are fallen angels. I got, I got to take issue with that. I, I mean, uh, serious, serious issue with that. Aside from Jesus being the Son of God, which you're essentially saying Jesus is a fallen angel, we go to 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. So, aside from that, you're claiming that we are fallen angels. I, I, <laughs> you're attacking the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and disguising yourself as one of us and you're not one of us at all you don't have any understanding you have no faith in the Word of God you do not believe the Bible that you hold in your hands and you're trying to preach these non-biblical books you what you call probably because you're a deceiver, you probably call them extra biblical books. 
they're not extra biblical at all they're fables fairy tales and they're used for the purpose of getting people away from the Bible all right and it's no good it's wicked and it's interesting because as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man which is Jesus Christ obviously so we see the this wickedness happening today and that wickedness was happening in the days of Noah All right, and so it's pretty reasonable for Jesus to warn us about the world that we're in the world that is to come and that we're already in it's interesting Jesus says show us um, uh, or I'm sorry Jesus is asked what shall be the sign of thy coming in of the end of the world and the very first thing Jesus says take heed that no man deceive you because he's telling us hey there's a world of deception coming at you and it's only gonna get worse and worse until the end All right and so that's this is evidence right here of the wickedness of the world that we live in when people don't have any faith at all in the Bible that they hold in their hands and they're preaching and coming at those of us that are born of the Spirit of God that do have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in the Bible that we hold in our hands and they're coming at us all the time all right and they're deceiving and they're deceiving because they've been deceived all right so uh, if you want to you know to understand this let's say you are a child of God and you want to understand this a little better what's well, real simple all right so who are the sons of God in the days of Noah it's all men when did the separation of sons of God and the sons of the wicked one begin it began when God when God made his covenant his promises with Abraham then the division began all right because now we got the children of God and outside of the children of God are the children of the devil it's really that simple so God made a promise with Abraham and the Spirit of God watched over his people the children of Israel which are the children of God and so on and so forth I you know I could uh, tell you the whole story I guess I'm try to make it real simple but let's not lose sight of that fact that everybody in the days of Noah were sons of God and they were wicked which came out of necessity this separation and that separation was made when God promised Abraham that he would make Abraham the father of many nations okay so that's long enough uh, if you have any questions you have any follow-ups fear the Lord my number one thing to you would be to believe the Bible you hold in your hands until you get to that point hey, nothing else matters